Assalamualaikum, good morning Okay, yesterday we have discussed about photoactive material Our discussions evolving around the, which material is suitable for photovoltaic application And we found out that, we concluded that yesterday we need semiconducting material Anything that has uh, narrow or wide band gap could be uh, used for photoactive materials in solar cells So now we need to look at the input for our machine and our machine is the solar cell and the device need input so in our case, in solar cell, the input will be the light so we need to discuss about the fuel or the input for our device, which is the light and we have the instrument uh, to analyze our input which is known as absorption spectrometer and it is famously uh, known in this lab the device is UV VIS UV VIS spectrometer we have many names we have the conventional name or the general name is absorption spectrometer and sometimes people will use UV VIS spectrometer or sometimes UV NIR spectrometer that is very specific if UV and IR means that the wavelength that we are going to study is from the ultraviolet light to near infrared of wavelength. If UV this, it is very specific that we will study, we could study the wavelength from ultraviolet to visible wavelength. So in general, they are absorption spectrometer. What are we going to study? The absorption of light. How much light is being absorbed? So in this second chapter, we will discuss the instrument and about the light how much light will be absorbed by the semiconductor and how are we going to analyze the results so today we will discuss about the light first and next week we will discuss about data characterization data analysis and characterization so let us take a look at the learning outcomes uh, the first learning outcome is to understand the difference between the absorbed light and reflected light so light when we shine any material under illumination of light no matter whether it is, whether it is sunlight or torchlight or whatever color of the light is the light could be absorbed by the material absorbed and vanished because the light is being absorbed by the electron or the light doesn't be absorbed but it is reflected reflected out from the material doesn't absorb or the light could be transmitted through the material so three consequences whenever we expose uh, any material under illumination of light the light will be absorbed, reflected or transmitted second learning outcome is to understand the correlation between the band gap of semiconducting material and the color of the semiconducting material the band gap also could determine the color of semiconducting material so we all know that the visible light that we could see for example uh, the light is uh, we usually term the light is white in color and actually that white light consists of all visible light which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet and combination of all this light remember the term is light not pigment, not dye, not paint if you, if you mix paint red paint, orange, yellow, until violet paint what color will you get? black that is pigment pigment is different from light we are talking about light okay? if you combine all the red until violet light you will get white and we could separate this light in the white light using glass prism which I believe we have done this experiment in our secondary school Using glass prism, we could uh, separate all the lights, red until violet. And this is the correlation. Yeah, the correlation of the energy, also the wavelength of the light, which the red color has the lowest energy, correspond to the longest wavelength. In contrary, violet has the highest energy if we compare to all visible light, but the wavelength is the shortest so visible light consists of seven colors we all know of that and they appear as white cumulatively 
but whenever we shine everything under illumination of sunlight, they will select. The material will select which light will be absorbed based on their band gap. Different band gap, different color of light will be absorbed, transmitted or reflected. Now, today we will take a look how, what is the correlation between the band gap and the color of the semiconducting material. So this is the correlation, we have the wheel of color. Indigo ion and violet ion combine them together. So correlation between absorbed light and color of semiconducting material. If semiconductor X, let's say we have semiconductor X, absorbs red light. It absorbs red light very intensely. So the first excitation of electron happens at red light region. And how about the color of the semiconductor X? The color will be green. How about if semiconductor X absorbs blue light? The color of semiconductor X will be orange. So why is that is this phenomenon happening? Why? What is the reason? Because of this. So imagine that we have semiconductor X and semiconductor will have the balance band and also the connection band over here. And this is the band gap. So when seven, all seven colors are illuminated on the surface of semiconductor X, what color is projected onto the surface of semiconductor X? If we put any semiconductor material under the sunlight, what color can we observe on the surface of the semiconductor? So imagine that we have sunlight and we have all seven colors, all visible light shine onto the surface of the semiconductor X. So what is happening? So these are the steps. Semiconductor X absorbs light intensely. Example, this is an example. If semiconductor X absorbs light intensely at 5.7 nanometer of wavelength, which is green light, so we know that it is absorbing green light very intensely. Where is 5.7? This is 5.7, right over here. This is green light. That don't have to worry then. Okay. This is green light, 5 .7. So usually, it will keep on absorbing light of shorter wavelength. So if this is the threshold point, it means that semiconductor X still absorbing light at shorter wavelength. And how about light at longer wavelength? Will not be absorbed. Instead, they will be reflected. And this side will be absorbed and vanished from the surface of semiconductor X. How about the light that is being reflected? So, go to point number three. Semiconductor X absorbs green, of course. What else? Blue, indigo, and violet. So, green, blue, indigo, and violet vanish from the surface of the semiconductor X. We cannot observe using our eye. We cannot see green, blue, indigo, and violet because they have been absorbed. How about light of longer wavelength? Lights of longer wavelength, which is on my right hand side over here, they are reflected. So red, orange, and yellow are reflected. And the reflected light are the lights that we could observe using our eye. So, combination of red, orange, and yellow colored light, not pigment, light red, orange, yellow, if we combine them together, the color will be red. And red is the color that we could observe using our eye. Semiconductor X absorb green light, the color of the semiconductor X will be red, exactly following this wheel. Color of semiconductor X, sorry, Kita, uh, kita terbalikkan dia If semiconductor X absorb red light, the color will be green If uh, if it absorb green, the color will be red Sama je If it absorb green, the color will be red If it absorb red, the color will be green But this mechanism doesn't apply to all semiconductor Doesn't apply to all some semiconductor only. 
some semiconductor gas, they are following this mechanism. But some, some semiconductor, they don't follow. Because of what? Because crystal structure also plays important role to determine the color. Some of the colors are also reflected because of the orientation of the crystals. So this is the basic understanding to explain certain semiconductor. I will show you some of the material that follows this mechanism. I know that later, you, when you have ample time, you will try to simulate in your head, okay, what about if this color, if this material, oh, it doesn't follow this mechanism, why? Please remember that this mechanism only for certain semiconductor materials, not all. Okay. And these are the examples of the materials. For example, cadmium selenide, the light absorbed is green, and the color of semiconductor is red. So, it absorbs green, the color will be red. Gallium phosphide, light absorbed is blue, the color will be orange. It absorbs blue, the color will be orange. Same goes for CDS, CU2, CUS, nickel sulfide. They follow the wheel of color. Some of you has done the experiment in advanced material laboratory. And the color of CDC, you have done this experiment kan, using uh, UV disk kan? If you observe that the color of the CDC that you use is not red, betul? But this one is red. Why is that happening? And we have the explanation in chapter 5, quantum dot solasa. When we manipulate the size of the semiconductor material, the band gap will be changed. When the band gap will be changed, the color also will be changed. If bulk is red, when we uh, reduce the size, the color will be lighter. It will become yellow. Yellow kan? See, they see the moment. Yellow or orange, sort of like that. We will discuss that in chapter 5 later. So, which one of these semiconductor has the largest band gap? I know that you have the answer already, you have the slide. Anyway, just for the sake of recording video over here. So, which semiconductor has the largest band gap? How do we determine? By looking at the color. Uh, this color, uh, that, that material has the largest band gap. How do we determine? Looking at the color of semiconductor, or looking at the light absorbed, or looking at the name? Hmm? Looking at the? One? Two or three? Sorry, A, B or C? B. B. By looking at the light absorbed. If the semiconductor is absorbing light with high energy, it means that the band gap is narrow or wide? Narrow. Wide. So, if we refer to this um, light, which light has the highest energy? Mana? Red? Energy? Indigo or violet? So CDS is absorbing light that has the highest energy. It means that the band gap of CDS is the widest. Or largest, so that is the that is true. Now, which material has the smallest band gap? Copper sulfide. That is true because it is absorbing the lowest light, uh, the, the lowest energy of light, which is red. We are comparing with, within this. Light only. That's true. Now, let us take a look. For a semiconductor that absorbs ultraviolet, for example, oh, okay, sorry, not CDS, we have other materials, not CDS, we have titanium dioxide. It absorbs ultraviolet light. And it has very wide semi wide band gap. So for example, a wide band gap semiconductor that absorbs ultraviolet light, it does not absorb light with energy lower than that of the ultraviolet light. If this is the starting point of excitation, 
If the first excitation happens at ultraviolet, it doesn't absorb light with longer wavelength. It needs to absorb light with shorter wavelength. So it does not absorb the visible light. If the threshold value is ultraviolet, it means that it does not absorb ultraviolet is over here. This is ultraviolet. This is violet. Then we have ultraviolet. A, B, and C. So if the starting point or uh, the threshold energy for station happens at ultraviolet, it means that that material doesn't absorb all the visible light at all. Does not absorb. It means that all the visible light is transmitted, okay, absorbed, okay, reflected. 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 <coughs> All visible light will be reflected and appear on the surface of the semiconductor. So, combination of all seven light, red, orange, and violet, we got white. That is why the white baguette semiconductor, the color will be white. White is for grayish. Example, titanium dioxide. The baguette is 3.3 electron volt. What else? Zinc oxide. Nearly equivalent of 3.3. If I'm not mistaken, it's 3.5 electron volt. So the color of the oxide also will be white. Because all visible light will be reflected from the surface of the material. Combination of all, we got white light. This is for ultraviolet. Uh, for semiconductor that absorbs ultraviolet. And we have a second type of semiconductor that absorbs infrared. One, this one, we are talking about semiconductor that absorb this side of spectra. And in the following slide, we are trying to discuss semiconductor that absorb this side of spectra. Infrared is this side. So narrow band gap semiconductor absorbs infrared. It absorbs light with energy higher than that of the infrared as well. Alah, saya tak tak gambar sini. If the starting point of excitation happens at infrared, it means that the material also absorbing light with the higher energy or the shorter wavelength. It means that it is absorbing all the visible light. So now, all the visible light already vanished from the surface of the material. So it absorbs all visible light, and therefore all visible colors will not appear on the surface of the semiconductor, and therefore the semiconductor appears in dark color. Absence of red, orange, until violet, the color will be dark or black. Example, PBSE, and the band gap of bulk PBSE is 1.55 electron volt. This is considered as narrow band gap material. So we have black. We have the reason. Why certain semiconductor is black? Why certain semiconductor is white? Why certain semiconductor is red, orange, yellow, blue, blue green, indigo, and violet? Because of the band gap. If the band gap is very narrow, the color will be black. If the band gap is very wide, the color will be white. Uh, yeah, will be white. 